Take a close look at the US stock market. It's a mess. Investors who have gone all in on the Fang stock roller coaster have doubled down and bought the dip. They must believe that QE4 will begin soon, otherwise their behavior is certainly short-sighted. It's almost as if these individuals have traded on the waves of a trend. 2019 will certainly be interesting. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what happened in the markets over the last two days. We're going to look at oil. We're going to look at stock buybacks, Apple stock. We're going to touch on the Federal Reserve, hedge funds, and underwear. Seriously. Let's begin by taking a look at this article out of CNBC. Dow closes more than 250 points higher in a wild session, erases the 600 point drop. So you saw what happened the day before on Wednesday's trade trading session, the market rocketed higher, over 1,000 point increase on the Dow Jones. Then you had the Thursday trading session, the market starts to fall, and then suddenly it turns around and it rockets higher, over 800 points from the bottom to the top. We are looking at a market that doesn't know which way to go. You're seeing the chart on the left hand side that's over the last five days and you can see that it has been extremely volatile. The Dow Jones finished over 23,000 right now so it has made its way up and that has made a lot of FANG investors very happy. U.S. crude falls 3.5%, settling at 44.61. Yesterday, the price came up by 8%. Now, today, it's down significantly. It has been so wild, up and down, with no end in sight. These are the prices here, the WTI and the Brent. You could see what has occurred. WTI currently sitting at just under $45 a barrel. Art Cashin, director of the floor operations at UBS, said the market on closed orders went from 200 million to sell to more than 2 billion to buy late in the day. That started the early rally. They thought they were going to be huge sellers. Now they're huge buyers. This information is coming directly out of a high level individual at UBS. They're telling you what's happening here. This is not natural. This is not an organic method of trading that suddenly everything just turns around. That doesn't occur like that. Earlier in the day, stocks fell amid renewed tension between China and the United States and then they just forgot about it apparently because the market rocketed higher. This individual here is the CIO for a $200 billion pension fund. He said this, the last few days have been abnormal volatility. The volatility we saw in October and November, I went on and said that was expected. That's typical when you have a bull market that's so old and late in the economic cycle, but the last few days are abnormal because the machines are really picking over more than human beings. When I say it, it's garbage, it's stupid. But here they are, people who are managing billions of dollars. They're saying and agreeing with my information and still there are a select few individuals who simply don't get it. And why? Too much skin in the game. Well, if you can't face the music, then you shouldn't be in this business in the first place. Don't put your money into something that you start shaking in your boots, petrified like a little kitten. So now I wanna talk about stock buybacks because this has been one of the very few positive factors in the market this year as well as last year but definitely 2018 has been huge you can see that there's an estimate by Goldman Sachs that it will exceed one trillion dollars worth of buybacks this year alone insane levels that we're seeing here and it had been the case where you saw throughout October the market starts coming down and they said don't worry this is just the stock buybacks they're going to resume in November. Everything's going to be fine. We hit November and the market keeps sliding. And then we hit December and it slides even further. The buybacks are there and yet it's not enough to push the market higher. Well, look at this now. Apple has been one company that has spent a lot of money on stock buybacks. This has been applauded in the market because of what it does to the stock. It simply pushes it higher. S&P 500 companies bought back $583 billion worth of their own shares in the first nine months of 2018, up 
52% from the same period in 2017, just shy of a full year record. Nearly 18% of S&P 500 companies reduced their share counts by at least 4% year over year. And then we get into the information about Apple. Apple, one of the market's biggest repurchasers, spent about $63 billion on buybacks in the first nine months of 2018, but the sell-off has weighed on its shares. They spent $63 billion to buy back shares. Now I understand at one point this was a trillion dollar company, but $63 billion is extremely expensive. I'm sure there were some difficult conversations between the accountants at Apple and those on the financial side telling them what they had to do. The company's repurchased shares were worth about $54 billion as of Wednesday's close, some $9 billion less than it paid for them. Apple repurchased shares at a monthly average price as high as $222. The stock closed at $157. In fact, we can go to that right now, $156 as of this recording. So clearly, they purchased these shares at a higher price than they are today. And in fact, if we use round numbers, they lost out on $10 billion. What are they going to do now? Well, they simply hope that the market goes higher. And how foolish is this? That they could have invested $10 billion into some future product, some sort of advancement in the services that you're currently using. But instead, they spent it on stock buybacks and the money is now evaporated. That's the problem with stock buybacks which people don't realize. And of course, there's more to it than that. It's not just pushing up the share price. It's earnings per share and other factors that are important. But as long as Warren Buffett says that it's good, the sheep will follow. Something is wrong. US long rates are too high or the S&P 500 is too low. And this individual here out of Deutsche Bank has made this claim that one of the two have to give. So we'll see, will the treasury yields decline or will the S&P 500 rocket significantly higher? Let's see what happens. And now I wanna to touch on the Fed. I got a few points to make and essentially we have to pay attention to a few upcoming dates. The Federal Reserve allows their mortgage-backed securities and their treasuries to essentially wind off of their balance sheet. They're not selling at a particular date. As they mature, they let it run off. So this is important to note because there are already predetermined dates in which they're going to do this. And you can see right here the billions of dollars that they're going to be selling off during, let's say, even the first half of 2019 in this middle column. Important to follow this. You can see that there's a couple events in January. We got one in February and then in April it continues. So definitely just wanted to make sure that you're aware of how that works and then we can see if the market will sell off on those days specifically this has been a loose connection from what i found but i think it's interesting just to keep your eyes peeled actual fed redemptions in the billions of dollars you can see the average treasury and the mortgage-backed security monthly redemption actual and forecast from october 2018 until december 2019 approximately 36 billion dollars not 50 billion dollars but regardless you're looking at about 36 billion and you can see where it goes from October up until next year and it's important to see how much money is leaving the system and who else is trading based on that information. This is the central bank balance sheets. You're looking at the ECB, the Fed, the BOJ and the BOE and what they have been doing and what they're planning on doing and they're going into the negative territory as of 2019. Obviously this is going to have a detrimental effect worse than what experience in 2018 but if they turn things around the stock markets could potentially rise these are the worst performing hedge funds right now year to date as bad as 36 percent we're talking about billions of dollars being lost and that is quite unfortunate i wasn't kidding when I said we'd be talking about underwear, blue chip, white cotton, what underwear says about the economy. This is actually from August 2009, believe it or not, out of the Washington Post. For one answer to the nation's most pressing economic question, when will the recession end? Just take a peek inside the American man's underwear drawer. 
Here's the theory. Briefly, sales of men's underwear typically are stable because they rank as a necessity, but during times of severe financial strain, men will try to stretch the time between buying new pairs, causing underwear sales to dip. I can't believe I'm talking about this, but here we are. So that was 2009. And apparently in China, there's a rise in sales of men's underwear. And that apparently indicates the economic recovery. So you heard it here first, the underpants GPS. We're talking about it. Not afraid to get into the nitty gritty. Not afraid to get into the grimy details. And so I thank you for watching. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. If if you want to support this channel, you got to give me a thumbs up. If you like the underpants discussions, also give me a thumbs up. And if you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have it all except for the underpants. So check them out at the link in the description. I talk about everything from the foundation to making money, everything you need to know. The link is down there. If you want the audiobook, then you have to go to themoneygps.com.